hope you're having a great day let me know if you can hear me well see me well and let's get started and while we're checking on connections and I'm waiting for your comments I'll try to show you what we're going to be doing today well yesterday I posted a new gif this one infinitely zooming into some cube with another space well, let's start to do this one today I needed to learn something about 3.js render targets and a lot of other stuff and yay thank you crocodilus uh, do you even see what I'm showing you yeah I'm talking about this gif this specific one well if you following me on Twitter you probably seen this one so let's get started Ebel, you can use anything to create this one I'll be using the canvas sketch again and yeah let's try to use it it's gonna be a little bit of a math today and a little bit of the um, inside stuff of this 3GS but not much not much yeah there we go the 3GS template uh, how do we call it space let's get to space yay good morning everyone to my Finnish friends okay 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 so I guess I will need to install three three here first grow what's grow and let's start 3gs template with a kind of sketch yeah it's working perfect fine good i like it that's what i like about kind of sketch i hope matt will update it we'll keep on updating it okay so there we go we have a basic 3gs template right now with a wireframe sphere and this is because of this it's wireframed and then we are adding it to this some, some basic variety and maybe the size also i don't want it to be random it's gonna be the size let's make it square and kind of a small one doesn't really matter because like, if we set it up a thousand not really much changed okay um so where do we start i think we start by creating a cube right let's just create a cube boop, 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 boop. so it's my holidays in the post-soviet post-soviet union area so i guess not many viewers today and mostly there will be not Russian viewers. Yep, let's concentrate, Yuri. Let's concentrate. The cube, the cube, I need to do the cube. Right. So it was sphere geometry, and now we need the box buffer geometry, and we also need to set up the size. And I think it's something like this, if I remember correctly, the scale. Yeah, now we have the small cube. Maybe it's too small. Maybe the camera position is way too far. Let's make it two. Yeah, so it's kind of a you know, the sizing that I used in the in this one. Right. Well, next thing for to simplify all the calculations, I think I'd need to make another shitty geometry drawing in my Photoshop. That's why I bought the Photoshop to do this. <laughs> okay, so if we have the camera right here, and then we have some kind of object, object. Uh, okay, let this line be an object. And we have this object. 
And then we have this field of vision for the camera. So it's this. This angle is a field of vision. It's fourth of the camera. So when we have the distance, so we have the distance from the camera. It's camera Z, camera position Z. It's uh, not a color. It's this one. This is the distance to the object. This is the object and this is the camera. All right, so we have this distance from the camera and we have this random kind of fob field of vision. To calculate uh, the size of the object to fit the screen, you would need to do some sine and cosine calculations. To avoid that, what if we make this angle like... How do you call it in English? 90 degrees, but I don't know, that's got to be an, another name for this kind of angle. So let, let this angle be 90 degrees. This means that this triangle is um, have the same sides, right? And this means that this angle is 45 degrees exactly. 45 degrees. So this one is 90 degrees, this one is 45. This means this one is also 45 degrees. So this means that we have some kind of distance from the camera. Uh, and we have some kind of size of the object. This means that to fit an object into the field of vision, the distance to the object needs to be exactly size of the object divided by two, right? Because if this triangle has equal sides, right? This one, these ones are equal. This means this equal to this, and this is exactly the half of S. So. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. That's why I'm going to make the field of vision 90 degrees to simplify all the calculations to me. So now this um, cube is... Um, and let's try that, by the way. So we have the distance from the camera 2 and we have 90 degrees and the size of this cube is 0 0.1. Now, if I make this uh, distance exactly half of the size, it should fit the whole screen. Let's try that. Half of the size is going to be 0, 0 0.5. Uh, I think it fits. Mm. Yeah, now it's correct. And why is it so? Oh, yeah, because, yeah, I know the reason. Because the position of the cube is actually in the center of the cube. And that means the cube is actually not exactly at the at this kind of position, so to make it exactly at that position, I would need to move it half of its size. So mesh position Z equals uh, minus 0 0.5, and then it will perfectly work. Yeah, now, so now the cube fits exactly the whole screen. Yeah, you can see that. And well, the, the geometry works. And well, it is good news that the geometry is actually working because I like geometry and I like when it works. Okay, right angle, right angle, thank you. Um, I'm actually spent six years learning math, but learned that in two languages, Russian and Ukrainian, and never actually went into the English. So I don't know any terms in English now, but I know a lot of math. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, David feel a little embarrassed, but now I know it's the right angle. Not the wrong one, it's the right one. All right, now we have the cube. And well, now we can try to zoom the cube so it fits the whole camera. <laughs> now we have to, yeah, actually my friend made me a haircut. And we have all the barbershops opening on Monday, in Ukraine at least. All right, so now we can move the, the object so it fits the whole screen. And now we can make some kind of a loop animation. So it will be there right in the render loop. I need the playhead. And what are we going to move, the camera or the object? Let's move the object. So the object is mesh position Z. So by default, the Z position of the math is minus 0, 0 0.5. And to make it fit the whole screen, Uh, oh yeah, I moved the camera, right. And to make it fit the whole screen, I need to move the object so that the distance between camera and the object is this. 
and it's gonna be something like uh, let's try this first if this works yes yeah, so object is zooming but I think it's zooming a bit it's just a bit off so it's constantly zooming into the camera you can try to watch it from the side and then start in its way again well it's kind of what we need but if you we can't see the actual loop yet right to make an actual loop we need some uh, object inside of this uh, cube to make this happen i'll use shaders i'll use my just shader template put it right here in the sketch and then i'll do And then I'll need to do the shader material. I think I could take one from my template. You could take one from the FreeJS doc docs. It just doesn't really matter. And instead of this material, I'm gonna be using material one. This is a perfect name for new material. Okay. So we have a material one and let's try that. Yeah, so now we have the cube with the UVs visualized. I'm gonna drag shaders into my editor so I can see them. Yeah, and just so we know that it's working fine, it's gonna be a red one, perfect. So let's leave the UVs for now. All right, so now I need, I need to draw a cube inside the cube. Well, of course I can create another mesh, but if you saw the animation we are trying to do today and this one is actually by Etienne you can you could see his take on this one I just tried to redo it and he's he went into the explosion thing like stopping on each iteration and what I'm trying to do I'm trying to do it smooth so it zooms constantly it's not gonna be maybe as cool as that but it's gonna be smooth zooming for sure all right well, now you might notice that um, the cube is not actually that smoothly zooming into the screen. It's starting real slow and then it's go faster. And this is because, um, because of math, obviously. Because we're using linear function for now. Like this one is a linear function, function. And this means that the derivative of this function is constant. And the derivative of the function is actually the speed. Like the let's get into that. Okay, let's first try to draw another cube on the cube. Yeah, and then we go to the derivatives. So how to draw another cube on the actual cube? For this, we would need to use another render target. So right now we're using one render target. We're just rendering on the screen, and I would like to render this scene again. And put it at a texture on my cube that's what we're trying to do today so for this I will create another scene I'll call it a buffer scene there are a bunch of tutorials how to do that online Just let me find a place where to put where to put my stuff I think here is a, is a good place so I'm gonna call it buffer scene it's gonna be another three scene this is actually a nice way like you can do a real crazy effects with this uh, what this way all right now I will also need a texture to which I would render my scene and let's call it buffer texture and this should be webgl render target new three gel render target oh hello and then in the options i think i would need to set up some kind of uh, filters like the main filter and mock filter i think if i remember correctly 
you I, I don't think this is crucial but it's just to make it more beautiful three linear filter I did and then the Mac filter it's kind of the nearest filter we could try to change that later to see what's going to be uh, the difference if we change those filters. Yeah, here we go. So now we have the buffer texture, we have the buffer scene. We could try to add something into this buffer scene. Let's, uh, let's add another cube. Let's just add another cube. And well, I'm creating the mesh here. Let's create the mesh one the perfect name and I will add this mesh one into the buffer scene not into the actual scene but into the buffer scene okay here we go it's all good and now I could try to render this buffer scene right and to do that I would just call the renderer render I guess So the renderer has actually a method set render target. So we could set the target into which we would be rendering the actual scene right now. We have to set it before we render the scene. So it's gonna be renderer set render target. Yeah, it's called like that. And then it's gonna be this buffer texture. Buffer texture. After this, we could uh, render the actual scene. So instead of rendering scene and camera, we could render buffer, scene and camera. After this, um, I think we need to clear and then render again. Hmm. Do I need to clear here? This is kind of new setup for me to change those render targets. Never really tried that. So I need to think a bit. So I'm rendering to this buffer and then rendering again. But to render again, I need to change the render target. I think you should just set it to null. And this way the FreeJS knows it should just render to the default uh, view. All right, so now we we will have this buffer texture let's try to see it okay something is wrong width is not defined because why i think this should do okay it shows something i think i would also need to do the clear no Hmm. I messed up something big time. So set render target. Let's try to see if it works with the old code. What it doesn't it doesn't work with even with an old one. I think I Oh yeah, this is a mistake. Actually if you add some mesh into the scene and then you add the same mesh into the other scene it would appear on the other scene only so right now we're just moving the mesh between the scenes so i don't have mesh in the default scene anymore that was the reason so if you remember i'm moving the mesh i'm not moving the mesh one by the way let's set the mesh one to the same position so i'm not moving the mesh one so now if i bring all this stuff back it works fine just fine but i Let's try to see what it renders with the buffer scene. I'll just comment all the other parts. And the buffer scene is just static. And this is correct because I'm not moving the mesh one. So right now we have two scenes rendered at the same time and one scene is rendered into the texture. Next thing I'd like to do, I want to use this texture as a, as a texture for my shader material of my box. In, a, in, a, in an actual scene I'm looking at. For this to happen, I'll set the, okay, let's just call it texture. Let's call it, 
equals texture 2D texture VUV. All right, and let's preview it. Next thing, yeah, now it's white because it doesn't work. I don't have the texture set yet. Now I need to set the uniform. Texture type T, value null by default, and then I need to set this texture inside my render loop. So what I want to do, I want to uh, material one uniforms um, texture value equals this buffer texture uh, texture it actually has an attribute texture that stores an exact texture now we have this error the source and destination textures of the draw are the same and this is because we can't use the same texture for the rendering and for the reading inside the same loop for this we need to have two textures and this means that we need to have the buffer texture one and we need the swapping part at the end so we need to swap the texture so call the temp variable i think you can do this with the array decomposition but well, let's, let's make it in old way there are a bunch of ways uh, yeah so this way we will swap both uh, uh, both textures and we need to render and uh, read from different textures here so i don't think it makes any difference but uh, just one of them should be, should be the different one so i'm rendering to one texture but reading from the other one texture on my render loop on one render loop. so now i don't have any errors at least i don't see anything too which is not good um why the hell this is happening to me again in my life okay but the first thing <laughs> is try to change the numbers no no hmm what is wrong with you buffer texture reading from buffer texture one hmm just for the sake of uh, clean names let's make it this one so i'm first reading from the default texture and then writing into the other one and this is the swapping part should be good well, it should at least render the default scene or maybe it's uh it's maybe it's because the texture is wrong one hmm hmm okay so now we have it's actually working it's just the texture is black and why is that? Let's try to render the scene separately just to see how it renders at least. Okay, we will comment everything except. So it actually has. It has to have some render there. But once we try to use uh, this one as a texture here, it just doesn't work. And why is that? Okay, it, it works like this, it doesn't work like this. So it's the texture, texture, I'm setting the, is this material one? It's material one, yeah. I'm using material one for the mesh. And I'm setting the texture, uniform. What is wrong? Yeah, this is actually my job right now. Yeah, I just saw the comment about the mesh one. Yeah, that was a comment. That was a, an actual error. Hmm. Maybe because 
the cube starts to be black because I'm using the same material here. So let's try to use the material one and let's remove the wireframe instead of material for the uh, inside cube. I will, I will be using the red one. Oh yeah, that was the reason. So once I set the material uniform, it, because both cubes used the same uniform, they started to be black because they didn't have and was like a re recursive blackness. So right now I have I have to set the different materials for both of them. For now at least. Um yeah. Or I would need to set the different uniforms, doesn't matter. Okay. So right now yeah, it, because it's so small, it's just an inside, it's just one tenth of the one tenth of the screen, and that means it's quite small, just one pixel, and then it grows into the screen. So, let's also create the particles. Right now, we're just rendering this small cube, and this is not interesting. Let's try to render some particles. So, particles, particles. I need some particles in my life. So, I will be using shader material again. Um, I'll call it point material, point material, and I'll add letter P here, and then just duplicate all this stuff. Just copy my shaders again, not this folder. I have this particles folder right now in sketches and shouldn't have added actually letter P because we still have the folder here. But anyways, uh, fragment, vertex P, all good now. And set so the vertex particles should be usually small. Uh, this is the wrong. This is the wrong folder. I need the folder particles now. And inside of the particles, I need to change the size. It's just the default shader for the particles. And inside the fragment, I'll just set the red color. Okay. Now I need to create the particles. Actual particles, which will be using this material. And <laughs> where do I create them? Which point? Well, let's create them right here. Particles. Particle geometry equals three geometry. Position equals uh, floor thirty two array. I guess. Now let's create the number of the particles. Uh, it could be uh, hundred for now. And should be multiplied by three. And also size of the particles, just the num. And then have this loop. And inside the loop, we're gonna set the position. My random. And then the size is just i and it's a little bit just random. And then I'll need to attach all this stuff to the buffer geometry. So it's going to be pgeo, pgeo uh, set attribute. And then the name of the attribute. And then buffer attribute. Lot. And then the number of the attributes per, e, per instance, per vertex, and then the actual the actual data. And then the same for the size, except for the size is going to be one value per vertex. Okay, so we created some numbers, some randomness. We attached this to the geometry. Now we can create the 
the actual geometry, I guess, the actual um, object. So particles equals new three points. Uh, well, P, G, and what? And then the material that I created, uh, how do I call it? Point material. Uh, no, not this time. Not here. Point material. And then scene at particles. Fingers crossed. Nothing works. Okay. <laughs> and why is that? Particle three points, PKL point material seen at particles. <laughs> Why did I mess up? <laughs> Do I have any errors in the console look? Well, not much. Hmm. Maybe the particles are quite small. Let's check on this. There should be red ones. The basic stuff, that's where you get to make all the errors. Why don't I have... Yeah, it seems right. Position. I think it's wrong. Position, position, position. Seems right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Now we have all the particles. Yeah, it's a typo. Thank you. Thank you for color. Saving the day. Oh, let's make the size smaller. And you know what? Actually, in the three points um, material, there is this default material for the points in 3GS. We have this attribute, uh, this property, size attenuation, which means um, uh, whether the particles should be changing the size depending on the perspective on the distance from the camera. And right now, if I zoom in, the particles are starting to be big. If I zoom out, they are small, right? And this size attenuation is actually this. It's just multiplying by like inverted distance to the particle. So if I make this, they're gonna stay the same size on any uh, distance from them. That's what I wanna do, but maybe for now let's leave them so we can see the perspective. Okay, we would be moving the particles the same way we are moving the uh, mesh. So it's gonna be particle. So now we're zooming in into the cube. And the cube is the particles with the cube. I also want to make them flat, so I want to make them with a Z and to spread them, use something like this. So now they're centered, and then I'll multiply this by some big value so they're spread all over the screen. And we're zooming into the particles, but we are not, we don't have the particles on the cube again, right? To make them there, we need to, to add another set of particles, I will create another object with particles it's going to be particles 1 and I'll be adding them to the buffer scene that's the scene that I'm going to be rendering on the cube so let's add them to the cube so now we're starting to see the particles inside the cube it's not yet the perfect loop though the same, though the, the both particles have the same position so actually it should be kind of a perfect loop and to check on the on the loop I usually do something like this so instead of playing the animation smoothly I'll do this uh, equals play ahead 0 or 1 so I'm just showing the first and the last frames of the animation let's see that So now we kind of see inside the cube on the last part of the animation. Mm, I'm wondering why. How, how are we getting too close? Maybe it's... Mm, 
So I think it's okay with the particles, but we're kind of moving too close to the cube. So this moved the mesh into the 195 position and the camera is actually at uh, 2 position. I think I messed up something with the coordinate system. So it's actually 2. So we end up inside the cube. So the start of the cube is actually minus 0 0.5. Um, and when the playhead is zero, it's actually there. Yeah, this way we only see the particles zoomed, but we need to see the whole cube zoomed. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, we'll just try to change the signs and see if it works. Hmm. I seem to check it at the start, but still we have it wrong now. Almost there, but wrong. Why we are ending up inside the cube? So we are not animating the camera distance, we're just animating the mesh position. Uh, well, let's try to move it further. Oh. And now it's actually almost perfect. The first and the last frames. And why is that? So maybe it should have been the, the other way. Okay, this actually doesn't change anything because I'm still recalculating the position right here. So right now I'm zooming in from minus mm. something is wrong with calculations almost there It's always the simplest stuff where you mess up. I draw such a nice drawing and then still <laughs> made some mistakes in the calculation. Okay, 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 okay. I don't think I need this one for the particles actually. And this was the mistake. The particles were the mistake because I didn't need to move the particles 0, 0 0.5. I just needed to move this. So right now we see the, so the first we see the actual particles on the screen and the second uh, frame is actually the render texture on the side of the cube. And just to show you that it's actually the render texture, uh, we could do this, what, change it to this one. So yeah, second time we actually see the UVs from this shader or the texture. So it's working fine right now. I just need to bring back the zooming part. Why is that 0 0.1? Why is it working? Okay, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that for now. So right now we zoom into the cube, but you see this one glitch. So it's actually a perfect loop right now in terms of the visual stuff. We're actually zooming into the cube, but the speed is different. And this is the crucial part. You can't you can make the perfect GIF with this kind of speed. And this is where we we should come back to the derivative part. So right now the function for zooming is this. It's actually a linear function. So I'll try to use it something like this, like a multiplied by x plus plus b. And the, and the derivative of this function is actually like a I is actually just a and this is a constant constant derivative so what we see here the, the derivative of this function is actually the speed so the speed of zooming is, is constant but you know what 
we don't need it constant right here. We need the speed of the zoom to be 10 times smaller than it was at the start. Because if we have the speed of the zoom constant, we have this glitch. Because the speed of the zoom needs to slow down at the end. And it, it needs to slow down 10 times. So we need some function. I mean, this, fun, this, this is constant. We need some function, some equals f from x, such that uh, y, the derivative is some kind of function. And this function from the start, uh, like from 0, equals 10 times from 1. This is the function we need to find. Well, luckily for us, I know which function exactly fits our constraint. Actually, I spent a couple of weeks figuring out that function. Not that I spent really weeks, but I was thinking like, what's wrong with me? And then finally it turned out to me like, what was the function? So this function is going to be looking like this. Be equal. Uh, so if we have this uh, 10, it's going to be 10 multiplied by exponents to the power of logarithm 1 divided by 10 and multiplied by by what? I think it should have been the x. Yeah, so this is the function we need. So let's try to, I mean, this is the actual function. So the, 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 the derivative of this function is going to be equal 10 multiplied by this value and, and multiplied by the same stuff. So this is going to be the derivative of this function. So if we try to calculate the derivative from the 1, I mean, let's try to calculate this value of this function in 0 and 1. So if x equals 0, f from 0 is going to be what? It's going to be 10 multiplied by this to the power of 0 is going to be just 10. f from 1 is going to be equal to, 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 to what? This is going to be 1, this is going to be exponent to the logarithm 1 tenth, so it's going to be exactly 1 tenth, it's going to be 1. I'm not sure, I think th this was the derivative I already needed, or this was the function. Uh, so you could see that the exponent to the power of the logarithm of 1 tenth by definition is going to be just 1 tenth. And this is going to be the 1. So. This is the whole point. And I think with the derivative, it should be the same if I correctly calculated the derivative. Yeah, it's a constant there, but it depends on the zoom. It's just the constant, but I need this constant to fit this restriction, just so I have exactly the zooming thing I need. And let's try to calculate the values of the derivative. It's gonna be, this one's gonna be just one again. So it's gonna be 10 multiplied by the logarithm. Right, and then the derivative from the at the point one. So I need the derivative to be also ten times bigger or smaller. And from the one, it's gonna be this same constant multiplied by exponent to the power of the logarithm. So it's exactly one tenth, which is equal just the logarithm. And again. This is exactly 10 times bigger than this one. So this is exactly the function that we need. Uh, but it's not to the zero. This is the e to the power of the zero. So any uh, value to the power of the zero is actually one. Yeah, so this function ex exactly fits my constraints. And if I just change that, I just, just, just change that. Calculate this function. Uh, Let's uh, zoom equals uh, content multiplied by math exponent. Uh, it should be 10 here. It's one tenth. 
multiply by playhead. Yeah, now I should use this one as a zoom in function. So I need to zoom with this function in my mind. But this function is actually decreasing its values, right? It starts with 10, goes to the 1. So first of all, I would need to divide that by zoom, but zoom is 10, so I would just use it without the 10. I don't think why I needed this one. Oh, because I, because I, I, at, at my first calculations, I tried to be something at 1. So something starts at 1, and that's how I got the coefficient. So I'll try this. This will go from 1 to 1 tenth. Right? 10 to 1, so it's going to be 1 to 1 tenth when the playhead goes from 0 to 1. A little bit of the math. And then... <laughs> That's all about math, you know? This zoom in speed is actually the derivative, and I need the derivative to be exactly the same proportion in the first frame and the last frame. Now I need to set the zoom in part for the both particles and both... Uh, uh, I think it's gonna be something like 2 multiplied by 1 minus zoom. Let's try to do that. Let's remove the particles first. Let's see the cube as it is. It's kind of uh, kind of smooth now, but we need to figure out the exact um, values here. So maybe it's not 2, because it goes from 1 to 1 tenth, maybe it's, let's make it this way. So right now, this value goes from... Uh, uh, okay. It should be zooming, but it's just... Uh, I think the camera is just too far. To make it to the 0, 1 range, I need to do this. Yeah, now it perfectly goes to the full screen part, and you can see that it actually is zooming smooth. So the it means the derivative is changing constantly. I mean, not real constantly, exponentially, but yeah. You got the idea. So now we could do the same thing to the particle position. Let's try to do that. So it's going to be... It's kind of, kind of working, but let's set the texture now. Something is a little bit off, and I think it's uh, the cube position. It's the previous error that we had with the cube position. So I think with the particles it's now all right. The particles are actually zooming smoothly. So it's something wrong with the cube position. So this one goes from uh, one, but it's between 1 and 0 0.1, so this one is between 0 0.9, right? It's like this. It's kind of working, something is off, so it's just the positions are a bit off. We have the perfect smooth zoom in now, we just messed up somewhere in those positions. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's actually the simplest part, I don't know how I could mess it up with those. Okay, let's just remove the cube. Uh, we can't remove the cube, right? Because we need to see if, if it's zooming perfectly. Let's remove the particles first. Let's just see if the cube zooming is is good enough for us. And for the cube, I will just make it red again. To 
simplify all this stuff. I don't actually see on this on this one if it's. Hmm. I need this texture, right? I need this texture to see if it's if is everything is 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 all right. Okay, 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 okay. So let's come back to the actual coordinates. Even though I made all those calculations myself, sometimes I just mess one one thing and files apart. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's bring back the particles. It's more interesting with them anyway. So maybe it's the Q position again. Try to change the sign. Something is wrong. And I don't know what. So let's uh, get back to the first and the last frame again. Something is off with the positions. Oh, this is embarrassing, guys. <laughs> we did the most complicated part here with all this math. It's 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 real hardcore stuff. But then <laughs> it's just about some correct positions of the camera and the objects, and so the zooming is in place. All right, all right. I'll try to guess the numbers now. This is my way of working out the math. Sometimes I'm just trying to guess. It's probably some simple error, but I just don't know which point. We have the mesh position. In place. Hmm. Probably something real simple. But what's that? So it's about the last frame. Something is off with the last frame. So the particle is getting closer. Why are they changing the... This is the start and the end. Do we actually see the UVs here at all? Oh, those are the particles. Uh, fragment. Yeah, this is the actual UVs. The cubes works perf perfectly, but something is wrong with the texture. What's wrong with that? It used to be all right. Okay, let's try to bring back 
Mm. We're moving mesh, we're moving particle position. Any ideas? Yeah, kind of. So, uh, but I'm not sure like why it's flipped. Uh, it sh it should be should be just fine. I think it should be like this. I don't know why it's not working this way. So the texture is wrong at the end. So it's not the same as at the start. For some reason. What the hell? Why is this why is this working right now? So I just didn't have to put any value there. Uh, so if this now works. Yeah. It's kind of a perfect loop. We still have some minor glitch and I and I guess this is because uh of some of the positions uh, of uh, either particles or the stuff we made. So it's actually should be perfect. It should be perfect. It's just that the zoom is offset for some reason. So this is the way you do this. I'm not sure why the zooming part is, is has its offset now. Okay, let's let's remove the size attenuation. Maybe it's causing this glitch. So instead of the perspective size for the particles, let's change to the constant side of the particles. Yeah, I think it's started to be better. Now we have the constant zooming. And by the way, to fix this issue with the red uh, cube, we would just need to set the, the texture for another cube. So when we here set in the texture for material one, we would actually need to set the same texture for the, mm, for the second cube, because we have two cubes, if we remember correctly. The second cube is now just using the red material and I could do this material 2 equals material 1 clone and use material 2 on the second mesh and then I would need to set the uniforms here too. So now the cube is using the same texture with the particles and it's kind of okay. Just to have this minor mm, Yeah, we need to clear the render target after we render in the scene. Just we have this minor glitch, and I guess it's some error in the position of the cube. It should be the position of the cube. It's that it's it has a bit of an offset, and that's why we get this uh, small, small, small jump. So if we just replace the cube, let's just replace the cube. I know how to fix this one. Let's replace this cube with a plane buffer geometry. What? Yeah, and probably plane I should make two times bigger. Yeah, so now you see it's a perfect endless loop. And all the errors we had, it was because the cube is centered and it has some depth and we the camera is actually clothed to the cube than it should be. So for that we would need to move the cube a bit off its axis and it should start working. But we could actually do this with uh, plane 2. Let's, let's just add some, some stuff here to make it more beautiful. So first of all, uh, if uh, UV, the UV is... Uh, Call it this way. Float border equals uh, 
I'll just create the real fast orders. Okay, we could do why is it all white? I'm using the smooth step on the VVX VVY, let's try VVY. Mm. Everything is wrong today. So I just needed to create some borders. I'll probably just copy paste from one of the oldest streams that I had it's not here it's somewhere I'll just take the code for the for the borders yeah this is not the right one probably I just grab the code for the border. Um, let's make the border four pixels and then, yeah, let's see. What? What is wrong with you? So I'm using the fragment shader and this is the shader that I'm actually using. I just wanted to put some borders on my plane. Now what's wrong with that? Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's not transparent and it was using... Oh, fuck, I actually did everything right. But this doesn't matter anymore. So I'm gonna mix the color and... Uh, mm -hmm, with the border. So the color is actually the texture I'm using. So I'm gonna mix the color with the border, with the border, and then do this. Uh, something is wrong, so it's not four. Like this. So now we have the plane with the border and it's perfectly zooming. And now I could add this. I could just add this. Just rotate it a little. But it's going to be flipped, right? So we need to do the rotation Yeah, so you get the idea how to make this one You could actually flip the coordinate system of the You could make it this way and flip the Y coordinate system Y axis of the shader like this so we could do the hmm, like two uv equals v uv, and then uv y equals one minus uv y. Hmm, not right. Okay, I, I need to use the uvs now. Yeah, so you get the idea. You can replace it with a cube, but with the cube you would need to account for the depth. And we have this unsolvable error with calculations. Uh, what was the question about the render scene? Yeah, so set render target, then I render the scene, then I clear the scene and remove the render target, and then I 
render the final scene that's going to be seen on the browser. So yeah, this is how you do it. This is a perfect loop. And to make it even more perfect, I think, I think instead of the playhead, uh, I can smooth it with the simplest using function like this. So now it's perfectly smooth. This is the eternal zoom into the plane. This is how you do it. And the core of this technique is actually this. It's not those 15 minutes that we spent calculating the <laughs> those shifts. This should be simple. If you would not think the chaotic way that I do, and I'm quite chaotic actually, I just it's just hard for me to be precise sometimes about some numbers. I know the idea, I know the mm, where I should arrive in the, in the end, and I find a way how to do that, just like we did today. But sometimes it's just hard for me to account for all those mm, shifts and numbers. It's just getting hard for me. It's much easier to me to calculate the differential equations than to actually account for all those shifts for the cube. So this might be your homework. You could try to do that at home. I hope you like that. We could make more particles. We could make them rounded. How do we make particles rounded, by the way? Do you know? Uh, float this equals uh, and then the uh, making them circles uh, and I also need yeah I just wanted to make particle circles I also had the attribute um, boo, 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 boo. the attribute I also had the attribute Now they're different size, now they, I could make them many more than... This might be a bit cooler. I think we would also like to make them red. I mean, white. Uh, this here. Now we have some cool infinite loop animation with the particles. Hope you like that. Hope you understood the math. Like this is the most interesting part for me in this stream. And all those positions, this is boring. So yeah, I'd like to wish you a good day. Please tell someone that you love them. Maybe your parents, maybe your girlfriend, boyfriend, I don't care. Just tell someone that you love them. You would feel much better. Uh, it's been a good, great, great morning with you guys. I like spending it with you. Yeah, right here, I'm still, still big on the screen. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, you, could, you, you, you could actually change that. And you could, uh, and to do that, you would need to animate the particles uh, that are inside of the uh, inside of the stuff. But actually, maybe try to make it real fast. Maybe I'll succeed. Yeah, there we go. For your for your request, our color 
especially for you now you see that the inside texture could also be moving we just need to move it with the same function so the so the derivatives would fit in so the speed of the animation would fit with the, the other animation and well to make it a bit better i would need to make more particles here yeah no jump yeah if you just follow one particle you would see that it's actually perfectly smooth because of math because of math everything is because of math i think i should make it even bigger than that it's not actually flying through the space because we have it right here on in the single plane i could do this but you would see this small jump that we had with the cube like math random multiplied by 0 0.1 now we would see a little bit of the perspective now with the particles, maybe like this, like flying through the space, but we will have, that's actually not a big jump. I even like it. We would also need to play a bit with the texture because you see it's blinking the texture inside of it, but this is a perfection. Let's not go into that. I think it's perfectly fine right now. Yeah, what you asked is actually much better for color. Thank you for helping me today and yeah the derivatives and the functions who would have known that you need to use the differential equations i think it's a differential equation the simple one but still to solve this perfectly infinite gif yeah again tell someone that you love them have a great day guys you could support me on the patreon i still have the patreon and all your html you could follow me on twitter you could just say me some something good I think I need it right now. I think everyone needs it. And have a great day, everybody. Live your life.